Hey everyone, today we will be looking at this problem of finding the number of divisors and sum of divisors. So let us first start with the number of divisors. So number of divisors. Uh, what do I mean when I say number of divisors? So let us take a number for example 60. So prime factorization of 60 will be 2 to the power 2 and then we can have 3 to the power 1 and 5 to the power 1 okay so this will be the prime factorization of the number now let us see how we can efficiently find the number of divisors so let us say suppose this 60 is representing some number n and we have it in the form of p1 e to the power uh, to the power e1 p2 to the power e2 and p 3 to the power e3 and so on we can say that p k to the power e k for some k okay so if we have to find the number of divisors let's say d n which is a function that finds a uh, number of divisor so it can be written as e1 plus 1 then into e2 plus 1 and so on and we multiply all of these e2 e k plus 1 so we'll multiply these and we'll get the number of divisor now there might be uh, things in your mind like why we are adding one and why we are multiplying so let us clear this all that why we are multiplying and why we are adding one okay so let's say so let's clear why we are adding one first so suppose we have a number such that it has only one prime factor which is p 1 e to the power 1 so if there is only one power here we know that this number will be 1 then p1 p1 square and up to p whatever that power is e1 okay we know this because we will uh, take this one and multiply with every power of this thing so we'll multiply it with this with this so the reason for adding one is we are taking one with every prime number because one is always a factor of a number if the number is even prime or anything one is always a factor so that's why we are taking it separately here and we are adding one to this power so this was the logic for one and for multiplication the logic was a uh, Let's take that number again p e1 and let's say this time we have 2 means uh, 2 prime factors and its power is e2 so what do i mean by this is first we can make a table like this so let us take one here and let me take p2 here then i will take p2 square here and up till p2 to the power e2 okay and then i will take p1 here then I can take p1 square here and you know it will go up till p1 to the power e1. Okay, so 1 and 1. So 1 into 1 will be 1. 1 into p2 will be p2. And 1 into p2 square will be p2 square. And here we will have p1 square. Then we will have p1 square p2 and so on. So what we are doing is uh, we are taking all the combinations of these first prime number with all the other prime number we are getting in factorization. So we are taking all these combinations so because we are taking combination we are multiplying them we are multiplying their power by adding one and the reason for adding one i have told because of this one extra one and the multiplication is because of combination okay so now let us look at the code of this let me open it so this is number of divisor the code for number of divisor so let's start with main so here is our main uh, we have taken a number like 144 let me change it to 60 which we took in our example okay so we have a function count divisors which will count the number of divisors so we have created first a map map and why we have created a map is i'll explain it to you on the go let me have a snip of this thing and i'll explain it here so we are taking a map mp here and then we are iterating so this is the loop for finding primes we all know that so we will start from 2 and we will go till square root of 
the number n which is an efficient way of finding a prime number so if uh, a number is dividing it that means that is a prime factor of it so what we will do is we will keep on dividing to calculate the power so let's say we have 4 so we have a 2 as a prime factor of this total power 2 so when first 4 comes then we will divide it by 2 and inside the map of 2 first it was 2 comma 0 then we will divide it once so it will become 2 and here we are adding mp of what uh, i i is 2 so we to this 2 we are doing a plus plus so what will it make is it will get converted into 2 and then 1 then again we have while loop so we know that 2 more 2 is equal to 0 so we'll divide it again so it will become 2 by 2 and then we'll have 1 here and mp plus plus again so it will get converted into uh, 2 comma 2 this will be the pair inside the map so this will be key and this will be, uh, this will be value so this value will represent e1 e and this key will represent p so as we write the form p to the power e so similarly there will be multiple keys so we will name it as p1 to the power e1 and so on p to the power e2 and further so this was our logic and at last what we are doing is let me sorry let me erase this thing okay let me erase it completely okay so after finding this prime numbers up to layer now we are checking if n itself is a prime so if itself is a prime we have to count that power that n to the power something okay so we are adding mp to the n plus plus that is the number itself is a prime factor of itself so if we suppose take 13 so what we will get is 13 to the power 1 because 13 is a prime number so we are adding mp n plus plus so it will be 13 and 1 okay now what is this loop doing is we are doing the multiplication work so first we are adding one to every power that was our e1 plus one this is adding one and this is multiplying so e1 plus one is getting multiplied with its previous result or we can say e2 plus one this is into and this further goes on till we reach the end of the map okay so we are multiplying it and the answer we are returning here let me run this code and see if it works fine or not let me compile it okay so compilation successful now i'll run it and let me show you the output so the output here is 12 as we saw here let me open this okay so for 60 we show yeah for 60 we have done that it was 2 to the power 3 3 to the power 1 and 5 to the power 1 and we'll get an answer like 2 3 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 so it will be 4 into 2 okay it will be 2 oh sorry for this mistake it will be 2 yeah so we are getting 3 into 2 and then again into 2 so it will be 12 and the answer we are getting is 12 itself here so I ran it and the answer is done. So this is the code. I'll give the link in the description for this code. Now let's move on the second one that is sum of divisors. Let me clear this up and yeah, sum of divisors. So suppose again we have a number n which only has one prime factor. That means the number itself is a prime or maybe it has one prime factor. So how we are representing the sum formula is that we are writing for this p1 to the power e1 we can write the sum as 1 because 1 is a factor plus p1 plus p1 square and up till plus p1 to the power e1 okay so this makes sense because we are adding all those factors now this itself is you can see is a gp so we can write it with the sum of gp formula which is p1 to the power e1 plus 1 minus 1 by p1 minus 1 okay a to the power r minus 1 over a minus 1 
this is our formula so let's look at this now so suppose uh, this was for this form n equal to p to the power e1 only one prime factor what if we have two let's look for two n equal to p1 to the power e1 and p2 to the power e2 okay so for this we will write the formula which we wrote for this uh, let me write it up for you so it was p1 to the power e1 plus 1 minus 1 over p1 minus 1 and we are we'll do a multiplication of both of these because we are again taking combination so p2 to the power e2 plus 1 minus 1 over p2 minus 1 so we'll write uh, this will become our some formula when we have two prime factors two prime factors okay and we can generalize this formula by adding a dot 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 in this thing only that will write pk to the power ek plus one minus one over pk minus one okay so this is the formula now let us see how we can represent this in code itself let me bring up the code editor okay so sum of divisor is this one let me take a snip of this okay so this one yeah okay this one work so again we have our number there's some problem with this thing let me correct it okay okay all right we are good good okay so again we have as example we have 10 then we call this function sum of divisor and we go here again we have created a map for storing the key value pairs that is the number itself the prime number prime number and its count that is p to the power p1 to the power e1 form okay so this is what we are storing so this loop again is similar for finding primes this uh, second loop is if uh, the number itself is prime so suppose we say 13 so we'll have 13 to the power 1 and now for some we have uh, stored as 1 because uh, why we have not stored 0 is because in the formula we saw that we were multiplying those terms so if initially we had 0 then what it would simply do is it would uh, make the whole sum as 0 so we don't want that that's why we are taking it as 1 now let's look at this one this loop so this loop right here is the important one so we are iterating on the map so this is iterating on the map we are taking one p and one current sum uh, let us look why we are taking this two. so we have another loop inside it what we are doing is we are doing i equal to i t dot second plus one and i greater than zero and i minus minus then we take current sum we find the current sum as i uh, i into p that is let's take that thing n equal to p1 to the power e1 so this had a formula as p1 to the power e1 plus 1 minus 1 over p1 minus 1 so what we are seeing is there this thing e1 plus 1 this is represented as i t dot second plus 1 right and why we are not writing equal to zero there is a reason for this so suppose if we take this thing for e equal e1 equal to zero let's say e1 equal to zero what will we get we'll get p1 even is zero so we'll get one minus one and then p1 minus one so this is what we, what we are getting so it will simply cancel out and we will get a one right so that's why we did not need to take i equal to 0 we are going till i equal to 1 okay so i t plus second this will represent this thing this i t plus second and then we are subtra uh, subtracting it and for every current sum we are finding for this current prime what current sum represent is for the current prime what is the sum so current prime let me write here current prime so what is the sum of that what it is representing 
right so we have it here and then p we will multiply it with id dot first why we are multiplying is so first we have p equal to one now what we want that when we are finding a power let's uh, say we have 2 to the power 4 so how, how we can find this we can find this by 2 to the power 3 into 2 2 to the power 3 can still be broken into 2 to the power 2 into 2 okay so this is what we are doing so we are going in a reverse direction so we are starting from 1 and we are adding uh, doing a plus plus that means we are increasing the power every time and we are finding this term right here so p1 e1 plus 1 minus 1 and in the formula let me open it for you i think i yeah this one so what we were doing we were multiplying this so rather than dividing and then multiplying what we can do we can put e1 once as 0 so what we'll get is p1 minus 1 and then p1 minus 1 so it will cancel out as 1 so rather than dividing it time and again what we are doing is we are going to multiply these terms p1 e1 plus 1 and then we are going to multiply the code itself let me show you the code okay so this one so we are multiplying the current sum i into p then p into i t plus first which is for the power and as soon as we get the current sum we are next finding sum into current sum okay so this will give us the means the previous sum and then multiplying the second sum right so this is the code for this if you have any doubts still left in this you can ask me in the comment section and please subscribe to the channel and if you like the video do hit the like button thank you